what your choices have been and what karmic timelines and contracts you have journeyed, the light is calling for the reunification of all aspects of life in this realm now. It is calling for the cleansing of all polarities. It is calling for the rising of all sacred heart centers now. All are being summoned home to the greater light now. And welcome everyone to Whole Soul Mastery and Whole Soul School and Foundations joint podcast series today. I'm back again with Dr. Paul Pandika. We are at the end of February 2024. We're about to turn the corner, you know, into March. We know that this whole year probably promises some big changes and shifts and all kinds of energies. And um, we're here today to just talk about the things that we're seeing, the things that we're experiencing. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. And Thank you for I, having me. Yeah. You've recently written an article. You know, you continue to write and blog about the deep things that you see and feel and track through time and stories and myths and everything. The title of your latest blog is Rumors, Lies, and Anti-Culture in the Time of the Second Coming. I know there's a lot of things we could talk about, but for me, I might seed the conversation because what really struck me is something that I've been feeling and it's come up with other podcasts that I've been doing is you spotlight the Legoic light of truth in your article. There's a lot of, you know, you expose the darkness as well, calling it out and, you know, it doesn't really hide from you, Paul or me, um, but especially you, you go, you take some deep dives into some of this stuff. You know, as the darkness is getting exposed and being pushed to the surface, there is a choice, this Legoic light of truth, and you you equate that to the Christ impulse. And if I extend beyond that, you were saying that the only way to navigate through the kind of the chaos of our times, the challenges of our times, is through heart-centered feeling. And I think that's a really good place to start because the mind is what gets us into all the traps of the distortions and the manipulations and everything else. But the heart has a way of being able to discern the truth beyond something else that's masquerading as truth. And in these times, I think we're, we're all called to learn to discern more of this. But the beauty about the heart is it gets it. It doesn't have to think it knows. So anyway, I thought I'd start off with that topic of the Legoic light of truth and heart-centered feelings, getting into the feeling of things. And that's where truth lives. It's in there. It's in the heart. It's in the knowing. So I'll toss it to you, Paul. Would you share some thoughts on that? Well, again, thank you for having me. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, of a lot of things um, coming to the surface. Okay, so there, um, I would say that um, from an astrological perspective, there was a, a crossing of Pluto into Aquarian time or a, the Aquarian uh, sector. It's it's where now um, Pluto is now in Aquarius, and um, that re represents. Um, um, a leveling energy um, specifically okay. related to the spiritual aspects of existence. <clears throat> so there's a lot of words floating around um, that describe this best, but um, the sense that I get, um, and I couldn't figure this out. I actually had a, a, an astrolog uh, astrologer friend of mine point this out after it started. Um, going into the beginning of the year <clears throat> um, was an extremely dark time for me. I mean, I was looking at just this oppressive feelings. I, part of it might have been seasonal. I don't know. But <clears throat> eventually I, I conveyed this in words saying that it felt like the portals, the gates of hell opened up and I'm looking in them, right? We're looking into this really dark potential. And the feeling that I had at that time was, is, is that there's no way around this. You have to go through it. We have to walk through this. 
And, and so how do we get through this, you know? And, um, and, 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 uh, and it wasn't until after I expressed those ideas that, you know, a friend of mine basically said, yeah, you know, um, this is the point where Pluto has crossed into um, Aquarius and that there was all kinds of really interesting alignments this month, but it was basically causing a lot of disruptions spiritually. Um, and it's not just inside, it's outside also. There's all kinds of terrible things that are going on in the world as, as it's starting to expose itself. Um, I think in that essay, I talked about um, uh, the idea that Plato um, stated, which was that um, living in this reality is like looking at shadows that are cast upon a wall mm. and that we're living um, and we're chained to a wall and we can only face forward looking at images that are being casted upon the wall, right? And, and, and 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 within that narrow confinement, that's it's the only thing that we can see are the shadows. And so we believe that to be reality, but it's really an, an illusion of reality. It's an illusionary reality, right? Right. Um, and so anytime somebody talks about um slavery to a, a person who is doesn't recognize themselves as being a slave. You know, so we we were born into this world with the illusion of freedom. We all think we're free, but over time, we start to realize that that's not really the case. That um, we have an illusionary government, an illusionary religions, illusionary educational system. None of those things are for real. They're not real. The question is, is I don't know if anyone actually ask the question but when plato well you know professed this he said this is the reality and how did he know this question the answer is, is that he was an initiate of of of, um, of the mysteries of specific mystery school and so you can say that they had experiences outside of the linear time continuum and that was the impression that you get is, is that oh i see this is what it's like it's like we're in prison and we're being shown these images, but they're not, they're not the real images, right? And so he felt that, you know, it was up to the person who goes through these, these mysteries to come back and try to teach people about it. But um, that's a, there's an issue with that. First issue is, is that when you tell people who, are, who believe that they're free, that they're slaves, they're li liable, to, they're likely to kill you. I was going to say, shoot uh, the messenger really, for sure. Yes. Either, either they'll, either they will completely and utterly ignore you or, you know, that in Jesus's uh, experience, he tried to t tell people that, you know, you're slaves and they wanted to stone them to death. Right. And so people don't take to that kindly. And, mm -hmm. in or, and in the second thing is, is that if you're going to do this through like some, form of institution, like a school, or if you're going to do this through a uh, religion or um, an organization where I'm the leader, you know, I'm the, I'm the wise, knowledgeable professor or, you know, the philosopher or the guru or whatever, um, it doesn't work that way either. You know, it doesn't work that way either because because the, the problem is, is that there's, you're, you're working within the distortion of the shadow itself. Yeah. You're working within the distortions of the shadow itself. And, and, the, and so the real question would be, who's casting those shadows? Mm. How are those shadows being casted? Right. Right. So who's I think projecting? it's a complicated, complicated answer. Mm. Right. Because the idea is, is that it has to be cast by light. That's for sure. It has to be cast by light. It has to be cast by light. So <clears throat> the idea is, is, is that there's a light behind us casting the shadows. Or if you can move away from his analogy a little bit and say we're standing in a cave and we can't turn around, but there's a light behind us and it's casting shadows onto the wall and our 
shadow is part of that shadow reality, okay? So we can look at that and say, okay, well, that's pretty simple. All we have to do is turn around and, and look at the light. But in shadows, in, in Plato's reality, you couldn't do that because there was a wall behind you that you won't, you're not allowed to look behind it. Oh. Yeah, so there's another consideration to make. And that is, is, is that there's another realm that's usurped itself into the whole scenario. And that is a shadowy realm, which we call the astral realm. So that astral realm is influencing us and it's influencing our behavior and it's causing us to cast shadows against the wall that are not necessarily in our best interest. Okay, so, so, so <clears throat> that's a frightening thought to actually think about. If you were actually, if you actually say, well, yeah, there's this astral realm and there's these um, dispirited or disincarnated en en entities that like to interact with us and cause us to behave badly and um, and and portray themselves as God and and uh, and and authority figures and all other kinds. I mean, uh, the ancient people knew about them. They called them archons. They were the the rulers of the shadowy realm. Wow! Right. And, and so <clears throat> that people don't want to hear that either. <laughs> you tell them that, yeah, there really is things like possession and entity attachments and um, manipulation from all different perspectives of existence that are trying to, you know, connect to this, you know, darker, um, you know, enslaving force that seems to have parasitized human beings for a long, long, long period of time. Um, no one wants to hear that, but it's being exposed now. It's coming to the surface. It's coming to the surface. So um, the question about, you know, I, I wrote about this a while back. It was actually, it was, it was actually in Beyond the Soul's Meridian. It just fell on deaf ears. <laughs> or, just people aren't ready to hear or there's just no interest in it. But um, there, there's an idea that we could develop another aspect of our soul. We mm. could develop another aspect of our soul. And now there's, I mean, if you want to study the science of the soul, it exists. You can look at theosophical writings. You can look at um, um, uh, you know, uh, Eastern esoteric writings, you can look at Gnostic writings, and they'll talk about the different aspects of, of our soul. It even exists in, in, in mystic Western um, 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 Christian mysticism. It's there too. It's in the Bible. If you, if you look for it, you can find it. It's there, right? Mm -hmm. But the idea is, is that we're, we have to create another aspect of our soul before we can turn around and look at the light. So how do we do that? How is that done? Some people feel it could be done through the ways of Aristotle or Plato by creating a school and being guided through tutorials and experiences and it doesn't work. Is right. that like We're entering the astral realms yourself in that course of study, you mean? To astral travel and turn around or what what would that have been like? Well, if you're astral traveling, you're in the astral realm. You're not you're not outside of the astral. You're flying mm. around in the astral. It's not the same. Okay. It's not the same. So 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 there's this idea that it's not a, it, it, so where does it come from? Or where do we get this, okay, function of soul? And, and the idea is, is, is that there were three, and I think we've spoken about this before, um, Adam and Eve had three sons. Yes. There was Abel, there was Cain, and then there was Seth, 
okay? And Seth was really the only child of Adam and Eve. The other two may have been twins through um, a violation of Eve through the, by the archons or, or, or by these usurper, usurping gods. Regardless, so the Gnostics believed that there were three races that existed within the world. And, and one race was the race of Abel, the other race was the race of Cain, and the other race was the race of Seth. And, and how do, would you dis, determine those lineages? It has nothing to do with your culture. It has nothing to do with your skin color. It has nothing, it has to do with your consciousness. And that's what the Gnostics believe. And so you had one group of of, of people that were walking around in, in a very low vibration. Um, to, and even though they were loved by God, you know, they were favored by God, um, <clears throat> they were now living in a reality that they weren't really being protected by God anymore. Hmm. So they were, they were the ones that were the victims. And then you had an, the race of Cain. And then these were the people that were starting to become more clever and started manipulating things. So there's different ways to look at it. Freud had a very interesting insight. He said, there's three functions to, let's say, the mind or the soul, call it what you want. But there was an id, an ego, and then there was something called a superego. And very interestingly, and, and I think accurately, he said, within that ego is the center of all your phobias and fears, okay? So, and, and that the it were, was more of an impulsive type of emotionally based intelligence. Superego was something above that, um, which is not very well defined in Freud's terms, but it does classify the mind or the mind soul in three different ways, right? So you got three different ways, all right? So, so the idea is, is that, um, you know, we're moving through life through um, a very simple way. And then we move into a way where we develop this ego. And so over the last thousands of years, we've developed and developed and developed and developed an ego. And what does an ego do? It likes to look at things outside of itself, it likes to classify things. It likes to project it likes to be, um, it likes to um, manipulate, it likes to deceive, it does all of these things, you know, to uh, enhance the survival of the person who's doing it. It isolates you. The ego helps if you're living out of it, it isolates you in a, in, in a, in a solitary state. So, you know, and that, and that you are, um, you are living in a, in a much more um, selfish and a, and a much more, um, um service to self way right in 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 that perspective and you have a whole world of people that are players or people that are getting played you have all of this it's been going on for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years the race of seth is the race that came to know god right and so from a gnostic perspective you have the race of um of 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 Abel, which is also, they're also called the, the, um, the people of the earth. Mm. And then you have the race of, of uh, Cain, which are called the people of the intellect, the people of the mind. Wow. Okay. okay. And then you have the race of Seth, and these are the people of the spirit. Now, <clears throat> Rudolf Steiner had, I think, a one, Rudolf Steiner was at the beginning, he was a Theos, he was a theosophical member and he, he was a theosophist and then he, he split from the Theosophical Society and he created something called Anthroposophy. But um, it's the same thing that he said, is that you have a sentient soul, a soul which is related to the people of the race uh, of, 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 of Abel, the people of the earth. And then you had an intellectual soul which were the people of Cain, the race of Cain, the people of the intellect. But then he said that you have a third function of soul, and he called it consciousness soul, mm -hmm. where your soul is now becoming more self-aware and starting to integrate things back into 
a more holistic view of life. And so um, he actually called it spirit-filled consciousness soul. Ah, spirit-filled consciousness soul. Interesting. Well, also was very big on this was Carl Jung. And so Jung also talked about this. And he said that that process of developing a new function of soul is equated to like a little acorn growing into a mighty oak tree. He said that everything that you need in order for this to happen is already in you. The seed is already in you. Right. And so, so how do we how do we do that? And he says, well, it's 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 already in you. There's you don't have to go to school to figure this out. No. One one of the things that he said was is that this happens through our life experience. That the greatest school that we can experience is life on Earth, an individual life on Earth. Because as we're starting to find out, the earthly experience is a giant experiment, right? It's a giant experiment. You know, that the Dolores Cannon has talked about this and many others, that to get incarnated into this physical world is a great, is a great honor and it's a great experience for any soul that's coming in to incarnate into it. So the ultimate school is life itself. Hmm. And anytime a teacher, professor, a priest, or somebody comes in and says, okay, well, I'm going to create a school and I, I'm going to lead you to the truth, which is already in you, they're not helping. It's not, it's, it, it, you're, you're moving along a pathway. You may learn some stuff in there, but it's not going to get you to the point of being able to turn around and look at the light because um, they're part of the, let's say, rulers or the astral realm, which is influencing you, which is casting the shadows. And you're still looking at the ca shadows cast on the wall as reality. Right? Mm -hmm. And you're also not looking at yourself as a true co-creator. You are a co-creator. If you dabble in magic, you're dabbling in the astral realm and you're, you're inviting these energies into you and you might be casting, you know, stuff that is, that might be cool. I don't know, you know, but it might be productive. I don't know, but you're not really working with the light. You're not really turning around to the light. And mm -hmm. so when we, when we create that new, um, that new function of soul, you might want to ask yourself, what feeds it? What feeds it? And the answer is, like Ralph Steiner says, it's spirit-filled consciousness soul. It, it the light feeds it, right? So now we're, we're 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 developing this relationship, and we've talked about this many, many, many times. Is that our consciousness is now shifting from the mind, right, which is the source of the intellect, which is programmed knowledge in your head, to your heart. And by doing that, by moving into your into your heart, now um, you are um, you work moving into the to realm of feeling, you know, and that and that you're one stage closer to spiritual truth. You're the spirit. There is a um, the heart itself. It, it is a, it is our greatest organ to sense love, right? Mm -hmm. It's our greatest organ that can sense love, right? And what is love? Love is the manifestation of the spirit. Mm. And so that's kind of how we cut through all of the lies and all of the deception by moving into that heart-centered consciousness. And it's like, I always love this guy. He's the, the blind swordsman. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned him. He's like one of my favorite characters in any movie. His name was uh, Zato Ichi. And he was a, a Japanese char a character in Japanese movies. There was like 60 of these movies made in the 60s and 70s. And, and, and he was a Zen master. But <clears throat> the deal was is that he was blind. 
He couldn't see. So he had to learn how to sword fight with all of his other senses. So they took the major sense away. And of course, he was the best swordsman in all of Japan. But wow. <laughs> no, no one could beat him. But it's because he learned to listen and he learned to develop his sixth sense, right? And so it, it's kind of like that. If we're moving into this more chaotic reality, you know, and how we navigate through that, it has to be with a heart in a in a in a newer aspect of our soul. We have to live within that reality, within that within that aspect at all times. So people would ask, you know, how do we develop it? You know, and and you know what's what schooling do I need for this? And it was Young who said, no, you don't, you don't do anything. He, he said two things. He said, there's something called the um, process of individuating, hmm. developing this newer soul function and through the process of individuation, he called it. You become now an individuated aspect of God in that sense, of a creational being that is no longer being controlled by those interfacing shadowy astral energies. And, and when asked how to do it, he said, engage in um, what he called um, active imagination. So mm, we nice. all can do this. Yeah. Right? Through active. So we all have the capacity to do this, but in order to practice active imagination, you have to go through some kind of a creating creational experience because when we create which is what we're doing we're co-creating our reality it can't be through a coloring book i mean i guess it could but i mean you know you can't follow the numbers you can't paint by numbers you can't follow any instructions it has to be free form and it has to be creative right and so going through that creational process which is coming back to source is what be, is how this all begins how we connect to that and how we write poetry or 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 whatever it is that we do you know build a building or um you know um plant a, a, a flower bed or a garden or whatever it is I mean, that's what we're supposed to do here in this world is we're supposed to be that interface of um this creative this creative interface between the physical and the spiritual Humanity is right in the middle of all of it. Wow. It's powerful. I was just going to reflect back and then I'd like you to continue. But when you talk about the Christ impulse, I feel that creative impulse. And, and of course, what is our school system? I mean, they get their hands on our kids and us too at a very early age, right? When we're still are creative and following those creative impulses. I mean, you watch any kid, it's just as natural as breathing, playing and creating, right? And then you get into the system and the system drums it out of you, right? Yes. And then they teach the teachers. I was a psych major and I can't remember the actual stage of development, but when they like stop believing in you know, like the magical believing, right? It's like a, it's almost like a rite of passage. It's something they found in psychology, but they created, <laughs> talk about creating. They, they made it socially unacceptable to be believing in these things past a certain age. And then we have become adult kind of at like seven or eight or nine, right? And it it's just interesting. I have memory of that in my childhood of, seeing a lot of people not believing and just really getting into competition and getting into you know the things that were preparing us to be the adults that this 3D matrix has wanted us to be. But I have, in my greatest trauma and my greatest uh, soul evolution, when I was in, nothing from this world was solving that challenge that I had, that was an enduring challenge. That was, and we've talked about it before in other podcasts, that's the name of this channel on YouTube anyway, is Color the Magic. That's when they invited me to the creative impulse. I was suffering so greatly. That was the guidance that came from my intuition was Color the Magic. Now, it took me a little while to figure out, like, what does that even mean? But it really boils down to the creative impulse. I was invited to create. And and not yeah. and like you said, not just like a dot to dot connect it connect you know in a book, but literally right. like free form it, free form freely it. You create it, yes. free express, yeah, freely mm -hmm. express it. 
so powerful. Well, yeah, and and, and uh, there's different theories behind um, the the human development of a of a soul, you know, of a child. Um, there's there's theories in psychology. There's different theories behind that. But I think I think that the the best ones um, are the ones that are related to the the esoteric teachings, and that the human soul changes it about every seven years. It goes through a major shift and. I think that's related to Chiron. It's a Chironic energy. Chiron takes about 50 years to, to make 49 years to make a, a, a circle. And then, and during that time, about every seven years, we're going through a major shift in, in awareness. But yeah, the things that they're doing as far as tr programming our children and, and, and getting them to critically think at ages that are actually extremely detrimental for them, yes. instead of focusing on, on, on focusing on the more um, creative ways of thinking and um, freer ways of thinking is is extraordinarily detrimental. It's one of the worst things that they've done to our society over the last 30, 40 years was was doing that. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's a real problem. Um, but um, you know, we're 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 moving into this <clears throat> interesting lane. Uh, uh, of existence and everything is 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 kind of like starting to expose itself um and um there's 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 so the way that I, the way <laughs> way that i see this is that um is like over the last few months at the beginning of the year um the darkness is kind of like they're, they're kind of like their alter ego is now being exposed. So our, uh, artistically what's happening is that um, that this the Pluto is crossed into Aquarius, right? And so they understand how the energies are working also. So they understand it. They, they don't they wait until the energies are in certain alignments before they start making these moves. And um, I and mean, I guess the 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 only way that I can th think about this is there was this the movie um, and it was actually an album it was was written by a guy named Roger Waters, which was from Pink Floyd, right? And so Alan Parker made this movie with them, and it was it's basically an opera, which is called The Wall. And there's a very powerful scene in that movie um, where um, it's called In the Flesh. And it's when the alter ego of the lead character does a 180 degree reversal oh. and exposes exposes his you know adoring fans to what he really is or what this agenda is really all about. And it's about this massive totalitarian takeover of society. And um, I mean, it's it's in this film. And I mean, at the time we, that movie was made was like in the early eighties, like no one, I mean, you could see it more from a individual perspective is that maybe this is what this guy was going through. But if you look at the work of Roger Waters, he's still alive today. He's been very critical of everything that's been going on. And he was sensing it already back then that there was something very wrong with the educational system. There was something very wrong with everything. It wasn't just the educational system, the political system, everything. There was something really uh, insidious lurking behind it. So I think it was the, the artists who, who, who had the ability to see past the veil because they're the ones that are in the creative process. Like Young said, they're engaged in this in this um in this creative process in this and, and they're individuating themselves as more um freer individuals individuals that are now in charge of the creative process and what they're starting to see through this active imagination that they go through was quite frightening um in fact i think that in the future if you want to uh or even in the past if you want a really good accurate assessment of what was really happening, like in the time of the Cathars, when they were being exterminated? Don't read the history books. There's not much there. They wiped everybody out, and and the and the people that were, were targeted, they don't have they didn't have much to say. It was just the people that were crucifying them and the, and and that were oppressing them. They were the ones that got to write the history books. Well, there were the um, 
the minstrels and they were the poets and their testimony survived. So if you want to find what, what really happened, read the poems, read the stories, read the little bitty you know, inscriptions that they left behind because that's really where the truth exists. And I think that if if you're not waking up now, you know, I mean, I don't know what's going to take to wake you up, but you know, that is really what what was what I think he was already sensing is, and I think that what we're going through right now is just like the song in the flesh, is like okay, this is what was being you know held back, but we're not holding it back anymore. Here we are. And this is what we're going to do. And in that in that scene, in that and uh, is that they expose themselves, the people who, you know, this this loving throng of, of 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 well, let's say fans or teenagers or whoever these kids are, you know, are are now close. They're they're closed off in this room, and and now they start telling them what why he starts telling them what we're going to do. And we're, we're, you are, you are basically enslaved and that we are, you know, we're going to, we're going to make everyone the same and anyone who stands out from um, our image of a dutiful citizen is going to be killed he, in, in the song. He's no, distinction. Whole, no distinction. No distinction. Well, there, there is a distinction. If you stand out from the, the, the drones then yes, and that's the whole point of the, of the story of the wall is, is that, you know, put them up against the wall and what happens when they put you up against the wall, they execute you. The next scene is called Run Like Hell. That's literally the name of the song, Run Like Hell, because those who escape, it's just like Plato's image. Those that are in there, that are stuck in there, that you're either going to conform to it or you're going to get that. You're going to run like hell. You're going to get out of that scenario, and uh, and I think that's, I think we're sensing that energy right now. So, uh, but can I also you, add you, to what you're saying? Yes. Also, is that when people are trying to understand, like the, say there are beings that are like deep, deep, deep descendants of Cain. You know, they they may have no idea that that's deep in their ancestry. We're all descendants of Cain, all of us, and we're all descendants of Abel. We all have lived through. We all have lived. We've all been all of it through those perspectives of soul. We've all done it. We were all were being played at one time, and we were all players at one time. So, and that that interplay between Cain and Abel never ends. That is. The definition of the third density existence. Mm -hmm. It's either it's it, it's this power struggle that never ends, this enslavement that never ends. But so we, then we're, you we're add the descendants of Seth in that picture, yes. which we, we've yes. all been all three of those things, is what you're probably saying too. Yes. 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 Well, I, no. I mean, maybe let's say okay. Let's say let's let's say that for every human being who's living here on this earth right now, if you came from another world and you lived in an ascended reality, a fifth dimensional or higher reality, then yes, you have lived as as in that race oh. of Cain, or maybe even a I mean not a race of Cain, race of Seth, or right. maybe even of them. But you might not have lived on that at that plane on the earth maybe you did in atlantis or lemuria that's a possibility also you might have or or maybe you're were only incarnated into this earth and nowhere else you may not have experienced it yet or maybe and and, and so that may be where those teachings would be even you know more important to try to convey to people is is that there is another reality there another there's another let's say um aspect of soul to step into but in order to do that you have to negate everything that you were told um you have to walk away from all of the things that you've gained living in as in in the as as a as a member of the race of king you have to, yes. you have to walk away you have to you have to get you have to be sick and tired of the game you have to be 
sick and tired of the violence and the deception. Well, it's a and transcending, all which is the ending the trance. Yes, transcended. Yes. So yes. the one of the points I I think I was going to make is is that also people who have not left the matrix, people who have not turned away from the teachings, knowing that that is not really the ultimate truth, the absolute truth of who we really are. Is that what you have? Do you have people that are the that have more predominantly the energy of the children of Cain that are so intellectually, it's so easy to be fooled? That's my opinion. When you're only, you know, operating from the mind, which can be tricked in so many different ways from the projector that you're not quite sure who's showing the light, right? But when you feel yes. you have access to much more information. So it's why two just put two people in a room or you could put a hundred people in a room, but you could have people that they, they are coming from a place that they truly believe that that like the children of the intellect, the people of the intellect are going to speak that kind of speak and to each other, it all makes sense. But if you enter feelings like that's ridiculous, that's like child's play, right? Grownups, right? Absolutely. And, yes. and then you have the people who are feeling and saying, well, how are these people that are so up in their intellect and academic and all of these things, why can't they hear me, right? And you have yes. this conversation, yes. but this chasm between, because it doesn't ever synaptically connect yet. Two right. different worlds. I don't think it's going. Yes. So you, you used a really interesting word in a couple of transmissions ago. You said um, a, a, a vituation or, or vitiate this word. I, vitiate. 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 Yeah. Vitiate. Vitiate. When you, when, when you said it, I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> but I, I want to read this because you said that fraud vitiates everything that is not true in the eyes, hearts, mind, and soul of God. You wrote that. Okay. So, so, and I would say that, yes. And from a conscious soul perspective, I would say um, that, that um, not only that, but I would say that, that, um, that uh, this fraud um, that, or whatever it is that doesn't resonate in the mind, heart, and soul of a child of God in consciousness soul, right? So yeah. it's not, it's not like I'm separate no. in that sense. And I have to discern whether or not it resonates, you know, um, you know, in the soul of God, because in my soul, God exists. You see, God can't, God doesn't have a soul from our perspective. He inhabits our soul. Mm. He lives within the enlightened element, this new consciousness soul. So you even said it in this transmission, when you talk about the soul of God, and you talk about this, 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 you know, vitiation or this you know, vitiates, vitiates, which means to debase. Yes. Right. It, it means to de debase or destroy or to corrupt. Right. What a word. You just all of a sudden started using this word vitiates. I'm it's like, a beautiful wow. word because anything that's false vitiates itself. And anything yes. that's not vitiating itself, the light, you know, fraud vitiates everything, but the light comes behind and cleans up anything that is not truth either. It's like they're they're actually working in that way. Anything that's false is being obliterated from both sides. I got a word for you too. It's it's called apostasy. Apostasy. Whoa. What is that? So, uh, apostasy or apostatic or apostasy. It means the falling away, or in the Greek term, or in the Greek um, oh, um, uh, meaning, it means the defecation from truth. Oh, wow. Wow. So all of a sudden we have these, because that came to me before I, I listened to your, to, your, to your lecture or to your, to your video. And it came to me kind of serendipitously. I, I mean, I, I was just listening, reading something. And I went, oh, wow, what's this word mean? And so I started reading about it. So, um, and I think now we're look, we're listening to these more biblical or these very descriptive terms, which are much more religious, okay? Because that's now the time that Pluto is just crossed into is this age of Aquarius, 
and 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 the the energies of Aquarius, right? And it's reconfiguring our spirit, our spiritual life, our 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 spiritual relationships, not just internally, but to everything else, to the world itself. And so this word apostasy, um, the falling away from truth, and a person that um, was um, called an apostate or apostate, apostate. Uh, it's a hard word for me to say, but but that was a person who renounces their faith. Hmm. Now, and 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 they were heretics back in those in the in like thousands of years ago. You're you're apostate. You're a you're you're a um, you're a heretic. You're falling away. You're falling away from your faith, but it, it cuts both ways. Okay. It cuts both ways. So, and in order for you to, it's like shedding a snake skin. Yes. Right? You have to shed that skin, right? And, it, and, and so there's two paths or two groups that are, are it's, it's, it's gone beyond, it's gone beyond the physical. Now it's, it's, we're going into the spiritual elements of things, right? And so in one group, um, if you are falling away from one group, which is the lower reality, the lower density, right? You're a heretic to them. There's no reconciliation. So you said all of those people that are, are, are part of the race of Cain or live within their intellectual soul they can never relate to you, hmm. right? But the same thing is happening from a higher perspective. And from the higher perspective is, is that we can't live within that con the confinement of, the, of, the, of, the, of that jail cell, of that cave. And we, once you see the light and once you see <clears throat> what's casting those shadows, you can never, ever go back to living as a slave anymore. Can't be done. No. No, and so, and that's how biblical things have got. I we're never going backwards now. We can't, and so, so you know, what is it? I mean, some people feel that there was a covenant with God that was made, um, you know, at the the conception of of the human species of the human being. Why? Because we're called the children of God, right? We are known as the children of God. Why? Because we have this creative impulse that comes from the light of truth. We carry yes. it within us. Yes, I like that. This creative impulse that comes from the light of truth. Yes. Awful. And 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 we we're now developing this soul. We have developed this soul that's filled with the light of truth, filled with the spirit of, of, of the light of truth, or filled with this. Spirology, what 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 we've called spirit filled consciousness soul right so we have that but over the last three plus years there have been an overwhelming number of people that have broken the covenant with god mm -hmm. and they've fallen out yeah and the decisions that they're, they're they've made might be irreversible i don't know it might be irreversible so they have lost their faith in the certainty that in the light is where their eternal soul exists. So they've lost, they've lost that connection by making decisions that are aligning them into a perpetual existence within the shadows for as long as possible. For, for maybe eternity, I don't know, but for as long as that matrix exists, they're making decisions that are aligning them into that matrix where they will not be able to extract themselves. They will not be able to turn around and face the light because it won't have, they won't have the genetics, they won't have the infrastructure or the, the makeup to anymore to do that because what the decisions they're making is changing the nature of their own self, of the of the species itself, of 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 humanity itself, and we're morphing into something completely different, one way or another. 
We can't go back to what we were. So we're either becoming more spiritually aligned, developing a new function of, of soul and living within that new function of soul, which is now nourished even greater and more, even more aligned with, with the heavenly realms or the spiritual realms from whence, from whence we come from, or we're shutting it off by the decisions that we're making. Yes, many people are being manipulated into making the decisions, but we're shutting it off and we're and in that perspective, we're defecating. We're we're defecate. We're a defecation from the ultimate truth, which is who we we are as children of God. You see, so so you're you're an apostate apostate to um, that the the covenant that that you all were born into as a child of God, right? So now you're you're falling away from that higher knowledge, that higher realm. And it's irreconcilable. You can't, I think we're at the point now where you, 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 where this is what's happening. Now, as Pluto's entered into this, you know, Aquarian timeline, it's all, it's all separating. I think it's separating even more and more. And I don't think there's, I don't think there's any reconciliation anymore. I think that one group is seeing it, like you said before, as truth, Another group is seeing it from a completely different perspective from truth. And there's no point of trying to reconcile or find a middle ground because there is no middle ground. It's one or the other. Many, many podcasters, and it's even come through recent messages, whether it was me on a marinades or whether it came through direct messaging, but that there's no more fence sitting anymore. It, it, there, there really are choice points to be made there there's no fence to sit on it's just becoming very obvious that people even by lack of action if they're not choosing god they're choosing the other right and i was going to say are you seeing this in some of the way you're describing that as like if we had the fall from grace that was you know people have talked about for eons and eons of time is this a second fall from grace so people may descend and devolve further and some are in the return so are some descending in a deeper fall from grace a second fall from grace like at this critical time in in the world's history and some are on the pathway back the great return is that what we're seeing yeah, I think we could look at it from that way and we can say that, you know, um, we had to go on this, this journey, you know, and we had to, we had to, um, we had to develop an ego. So the, in the fall from grace, let's say like, like you described your experience in Lemuria, right? And everything right. was awesome in Lemuria, right? right? It, it was, it was. It, high frequency it was, living, it was what, high frequency yeah living in you high frequency living source and the closest thing that you can possibly come to heaven uh, on earth was was in lemuria and 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 we were being taught or stewarded by beings from other worlds specifically from the pleiades the pleiades and so they were they they lived the gods lived amongst us you see and so we had the capacity to um to connect to them and we had this really powerful connection to each other because we lived in this more communal existence, more heartfelt existence. But we didn't have a great power of discernment because we were relying on gods and to steward us or, or higher evolved beings. And so we had to go through this process. We had to go through this fall, I think, in order to develop um uh, uh the, the ability to um to to see um and to calculate and to discern better right and 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 that's that the fall from grace that's one way to look at it yes we were tempted by the you know the snake which is represent which represents lucifer and we ate from the snake and now we have the knowledge of good and evil because we, we ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that represents our capacity to discern the difference between good and evil, between right and wrong, between black and white, right? And so because of that, we get kicked out of the garden. 
and um, and we're orphaned, you know, from that society. But um, if you you have to go through these experiences, however unpleasant they are. Let's say that you were a, a loving being from Lemuria, and you were super positive about everything, right? And you and and you were this heartfelt being, and and you lived in this love consciousness. And then Lemuria sank, by the way. And then, and I want to get to that, uh, but I want to finish this thought. So, so um, you you wind up um, living. You died in your instance. You got you got overwhelmed. You got flooded out. Right? Is that what happened, or something happened where you felt you saw yourself going? And yes. You saw the faces of your mentors serenely accepting it. Totally you, at peace. You were, you were, totally, but you would You were like, ah, why? Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that so that happens, right? So now every time you incarnate into this world, you try to recreate your Lemur Lemurian experience, or you live from your heart. Right, you have this heart, this heart-centered person, right? And you're and 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 you live from positivity. Well, you find out it doesn't work in this lower reality. You know, we could, and, and it happens over and over and over again as these um, cultures start to flourish that were more heart-centered, or as a, a, a voice of truth actually shows up and says, you know, you're all slaves um, to a certain degree. Socrates says the same thing, you know, and, and what do they do? They, they executed him too, right? So, so once you start seeing these deeper truths, they wipe you out, they, they, they kill you. And, and, but, but so when you turn and face the light, your... many people who have turned and looked, found a way to turn and look, they're taken out of the matrix. The matrix can't have people turning around. Yeah, but you know, we're in this giant school and we're learning these lessons and every single one of these lessons is invaluable. And, and, and so you can say after this experience, well, hopefully the school is just about ready to be dismissed. Summer vacation, yes. we're all, almost out. But um, the, the fact is, is that you know, you know the face of evil now and you know what it's capable of and because you've been a victim of it for so long, right? But, but but you have to know the light and you have to know the dark. You have to know how it all operates in order for us to graduate from this school because once we become more independent, we become more godlike, right? And, and, and nobody's going to be able to pull a wool over our eyes. Anymore. We're going to be able to discern what's going on, you know, um, way before, you know, I mean, we can, we can, like I said, in that, in that essay that I wrote, if you're living from your heart and you're realizing what isn't resonating well with your heart, which is love-based, you can identify it as there's something wrong there. Now you need your mind to really look into this deeper and say, okay, now what is it that my heart is telling me isn't right, right? So we've become more balanced. We've become greater in that sense. Yes. So we had it. We had that sentient soul. Then we we had that you know that intellectual soul. Now we're going to take the summation of all of those things and we're developing this, this higher level of consciousness soul. So your, your question about the fall from grace, right? And, and that, um, is this another fall from grace? I don't think it's another fall from grace. I don't think it's because that already happened. We fell from grace. But the people who so, are in their intellect that aren't turning back to the light, is that okay for those souls uh, another fall? So there's another song, and it was called um, it was called Atlantis, and it was written by this guy. His name his name was Donovan. I don't know if you know who Donovan was, but he wrote like you know all these really trippy songs back in the '60s. He was he was like they said he was like the the um, UK's version of Bob Dylan, right? He was very folky, but he had some real trippy songs, you know, and um, Sunshine and Superman and, and uh, Mellow Yellow and all these really interesting, funny songs. But but he wrote this song called Atlantis. And in the song, he, he gives you a little, like he goes, he, 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 he like maybe for two minutes, he 
he gives you a, a oral history of Atlantis. It's one of the most accurate histories I've ever heard. Yeah. It was like, wow, you know, I mean, like Blavatsky herself or, or Casey himself taught him, the, you know, all of these things. So he must have been an Atlantean soul. But so this is what's happening, I think. I think that we're we're going through another cataclysm. Mm. It, it's it like Lemuria, like Atlantis, um, and you mentioned um, your one of your favorites, Noah, uh, mm. in your last transmission. You talked about yes. Noah, right? And yeah. so, so it's it's uh, it's hitting, and we're going through whatever this is. It's, we're on the verge of something, but I will tell you right now that. In Atlantean times or in Lemurian times, there was it was common knowledge that the continent was sinking or that there was going to be a massive catastrophe. It was common knowledge that there was going to be a massive flood. It's a question of whether or not you're listening. It's a question of whether or not you believe it because mm -hmm. you're, you're either in a higher frequency and in the higher frequency, nothing's going to get past us. I'm yes. just waiting for some of you guys to tell me, hey, Paul, this is this is it, you know, and let's and let's move on. But um, I think that in itself is going to be different. I'll talk about that in a minute. But no one no one was caught completely um, um, by surprise if their consciousness had shifted, if they were living in a, in a greater level of truth that in, in, in the Lemurian, in, like, apparently what happened in Lemuria from some of the stories that I've heard is a, a major percentage of people immigrate or migrated off. They got off of Lemuria well before the continent sank. They knew it was going down, but some stayed, but others, there was a mass migration before it happened. Atlantis got like kind of sideswiped by that, by a war. Apparently I'm not exactly sure the details There's all kinds of stories behind it, but before it happens, they started colonizing the other areas of the of the world because there were people that knew that it was going down and that they, and that the continent would be destroyed but it's like today you can say to most people you know we're going down it's all going to fall apart i don't know how it's going to happen but it's going down i think a large percentage of people say you're nuts it's not going to happen <laughs> right they can't feel it they can't see it well the great so shift of the moment. ages even like that that's a title i mean other people it's not my title but it's a, how what i entitled it and a lot of people are like whatever like there's no whatever. shift ever right there's no shift right so but 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 it doesn't just happen where the entire population is totally unaware right it, there's always people that are going to be aware of of actually what's happened my question is, is I don't see anywhere to run and there's nowhere on the earth anymore to run. Like in Atlantis, we could go to Spain or whatever, the coast of North America, or whatever, and we might be able to sur survive there or in Lemurian times where it just sunk. Then, um, you know, they went to, they went to the West coast of the United States. They went to Asia. They went all over the place. They found safe, safe, safe Harbor there. But where are we going to go? And I, I see it behind you. You know, you said admission is only by vibration only. That was another one of your, yes. your, your lectures, right? We have one to of, vibrate one of your... up. We have to vibrate right. up. Right. <laughs> but has anyone done it yet? <laughs> I think we're in process. I think that's uh, what the uh, ascension is, which is the rising. But you'd have to know about the different peoples that you described so well today to see what's gotten us so entrenched on this planet in different ways of thinking and being, and to get to a place where we know we're ascending beyond that, that that doesn't have the answers. You can stay in duality for forever and just be on that treadmill again and again. I think some of us are getting the cue that we need to it's through perception which is also coming from our vibration which can come from our heart centers that christos that you say the logoic light of truth it's leading some people in a direction that we can't see but we're taking steps in that direction vibrationally consciously i don't know that's my sense is that we are we're we're ascending out in consciousness right we're ascending beyond in consciousness 
and I think it's happening to so many people, but there's this big but there. Um, I heard it. <laughs> you're, we're still operating in a dense reality. We're, we're you know, so um, I think that there's got to be a transformation. And I think that it's going to have to happen to a lot of people. And I think that when it happens, they're going to have to be very visible. It's going to, they're going to be visible. Even to those that are, are still kind of like in, in, in that, maybe there's still a tra time of transition or transition period where there's still some that haven't made the jump yet. There's still, I think, going to be a core group of people that just aren't going to do it. But there's, there's going to have to be something that's going to happen. What it is, I don't know. But I do know that um, there's gonna, they're going to have to be visible, meaning that you're going to run into these people and they're going to be able to, to communicate to you without speaking. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be able, and, they're, and, they're, and they're, the, countenance, the countenance of their face you know, is, going to, is going to be totally different than what you've ever experienced before. It's going to have to happen this way. Um, at least that's what it's promised to happen this way. So when 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 whatever this transformation is, that it, it's like we're not shifting off the planet. That's the one thing that that we're 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 we've been told is that we're not shifting off the planet. Neither are we supposed to die in that sense. So there's going to have to be like maybe millions of people that go through that first wave of transition that will they will be in they will be they will they will be so different than everyone else and they will be so attractive to everyone else um who are, are starting to align into that polarity and into that into that consciousness soul but until we they become visible and until there's a a, a significant number of people i think we're still in limbo i don't i don't think i don't think i don't really see much changing you know, I mean, there's a lot of spiritually aligned people that are walking around that are still as, you know, still locked into the matrix as, 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 as I am. Right. So we, we, but we, we haven't seen evidence of that yet. We haven't seen, I mean, I've had extraordinary experiences, but I know that I have to come back and still live in this density for, I don't know how long. But um, there certainly isn't anywhere to run away in this density to somewhere else that doesn't exist. So I think we're going to have to we're going to have to go through that experience before any major change is going to happen here on Earth. No. I was just going to say in the circles where I travel, people that I know and the thing I things I've been led to in the last I'd say three to five years, right in this window of time that you're describing. I I am in the experience of some people that are beginning to rise and it's hard to explain and I I but I feel I'm I'm feeling it in myself that another consciousness is coming in and almost like the 3D earth planet because it's so filled with illusion once you start really making this flip or this shift it's so not, it's less and less relevant. It's just like how they talk about, you know how the dollar is worth less and less and less, right? Whereas back in the day, 1913 is worth the hundred pennies, you know, it was worth a dollar, a dollar was worth a, worth a dollar. And now it's worth two to three cents on the dollar, right? And there's that process over this hundred plus years that is just, it's just worth less and less. If we can apply that same awareness because people are shifting in consciousness, I'm experiencing some of that where the shifts in consciousness are taking place already and the illusion is worth less and less and less to people who are waking up. And I, I would not have said that in the Lemurian me because I must have been up in my intellect or something because I was still shocked in the way that it happened, right? I was still caught in the instead of like the peace that they knew they already knew i think there's something that's transpiring in the shift of the ages that is happening and i think as more people it's like the schumann resonance but as more people anchor this in 
it's it's all I'm saying is, is this is very possible that it's already happening. And I think there may be some godlike interventions, just like the people in Moses' day, they had no idea that God was going to part the waters. If that literally happened, but they couldn't have foreseen, it was unforeseen, but they knew that something epic that God was going to do or that, right, that was going to happen was going to lead them to a new life, a new plane of consciousness and liberated from at least the enslavement they had just left. So I feel like there's something that we can't yet see, but more of us are are moving in that direction, whether we're quantum leaping or it's incremental shifts and choices that we're making every day. Our vibrations are changing. Our attractions are changing. And I, I just want to put that out there. I wonder how many people listening to our podcast would feel like, would express that too, that the illusion is worth less and less. It's becoming less and less relevant, just like the dollar in its own way is becoming less and less relevant, which means its value is less and less. And maybe that is also what's transpiring in this window of time as well. The people may not say, I'm ascending, I've made the choice, I'm. this is my soul path. I don't know that everybody are feeling it that way. But I think what's also happening is that they're recognizing the absurdity of what's going on in the news, like the craziness in the world. And it's so bizarre to many more people now, not everybody, but more people that it's just less and less and less relevant to the reality that I myself am creating and that you yourself can be creating. And when we start activating as creators and we follow that creative impulse that's connected with the light of truth, that's informed by the light of truth, it is shifting things. If, if you're in a society or a culture or a group that's going through the experience, yes, right? That's the falling out. That's the, and, 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 and unless you're, uh, but if you're embedded in a dense, you know, uh, uh reality a uh, uh, a culture that isn't really resonating with it there's no chance that you're going to be able to i think you know make it a difference now at this point unless something extraordinary happens right see they and 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 the, and it might happen it might not happen i mean you know, i i don't know now you you mentioned something really interesting in um, your last transmission, you talked about um, you talked about the you said this in your transmission. You said that, that um, you are the light of the world. You you did say that in your in your last yes. the last one that I, I saw that you're the of the world. So so um, that's true. Um, but in 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 that in the in the in when Jesus taught us that he said that you're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But then he asked this question, it's almost rhetorical. He said, but who would put a light under a basket? Why would you hide the light? If you're the light of the world, why is it? Why are you hiding it? And so there's different ways to maybe interpret that. Um, but um, I, I wanna ask him, okay, if we're the light of the world, why, why is it still hidden? Why aren't we more visible? Yeah. Right? Why, why aren't the people who are moving into that perspective, why isn't there more visibility, you know? And maybe there is, you know, I mean, uh, things like Dolores Cannon says the same thing, is says that your light, you know, um, that, that you maybe can't see yet is having an effect in stabilizing, um, you know, all of the people around you, that that's a possibility. And certainly you can't be afraid to hide your light, that's for sure also. Um, and then I think that's a very alchemical statement because um, alchemy is based on salt and and sulfur. And um, when he mentions the salt of the earth and the light of the world, he's actually mentioning a very, it's an alchemical formula that he mm. actually states. I see. Is that, and, and that the unification of your polarity, this light is the masculine and the sulfur is is heat and it's also light because in the alchemical reaction that's what you use as a as a source of flame and then the 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 salt is um it's like a battery <clears throat> it's it's uh it's it's the salt of the earth which is in set itself has electrical potential right it's the, it's the battery and that's the feminine principle 
but they're only united through Mercury, the Mercurius, Mercury. What is the Mercury? Mercury is the spirit. And so when you, when you add these things together, he's basically talking about the spirit working through a person who's unified their polarities and now is living within a higher aspect of soul in, 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 in a spiritual uh, awareness, so to speak. And so that, that's definitely, I, I completely agree with, uh, um, and then the question is, is how do we get there? And then you're like, most of the lecture, what did you say? <laughs> you said conscious breathing, conscious breathing. <laughs> yes. There's something, and I don't know that everybody feels it when they hear it come through those messages, but for me, it's one and the same. When we are conscious about our breathing, we're accessing this other dimensional fortification, this God-like energy. It you leave linear time you you yeah. you can transcend the confines of the enslavement that we've been trapped in and we're all breathing every day we've already probably talked about this in other podcasts but there's something about consciously knowing you are connected to something so much more which is turning to me and looking at the light right the source of the light when we're consciously breathing we're connected with the source of the light and therefore your vision is totally different your perceptions the way you move in the world but when we're just breathing air we're just looking at the wall right yes so i truly believe you transcend this world with conscious breathing and other things of course but conscious choices and all of that but i truly believe it is a major major step to the transcendence and people if you're saying, okay, fine, I'll consciously breathe, but you're not really feeling it. This goes back to the heart. If you're not, if you're just going through the motions, this is where to some degree, I don't know that faking it till you make it because you have to enliven it with your consciousness. When you enliven it, the best example of this to some degree is in the movie Hook with Robin Williams. At least with the conscious breathing I'm talking about where someone's going through the motions and somebody's actually feeling it. Those are two different experiences. One's going to still be looking at the wall and saying nothing happened. And the other one that's consciously breathing with full feeling, full connection is going to be powered up at a different frequency. But in the movie Hook with Robin Williams, he's at the table and his kids have been kidnapped. I don't know. Do you remember that movie at all, Paul? Yeah, his kids have been kidnapped yeah. and he can't get them back unless he flies and he fights um, Captain, Hook. Captain Hook. Captain Hook. Right, he has to fight yeah. Captain Hook. But he's looking at these lost boys and saying, this is absurd. There is absolutely no food here. There's nothing here. Yeah, okay, that's funny that you all think you're eating, but I just don't want to pretend to eat. I actually want to really eat. And they're saying, so play, Peter. If you play, you'll be eating with us. And he just can't for a you know, segment of the film. He just doesn't get it. And then all of a sudden something happens. He's with them enough that he like pretends to like, you know, shoot some food into their face. Right. And he's just playing. He almost catches himself off guard. He leaves his ego. He drops it in that moment. And he just is complete spirit. He's totally in his heart space. And when he flings this food on them and he sees it actually finally land on their face, he entered that state of consciousness that could access that as a living reality. And I think that's what's happening with conscious breathing. But the person, if two people sit next to each other on a bench and they're looking at the same wall and they both feel like they're incarcerated in the world, but one just goes to this and okay, so we just have to consciously breathe. So they're just kind of pretending to consciously breathe. That's kind of like the Peter Pan and the hook analogy that I'm making at least now. You can't just go through the motions. You have to, something in the spirit has to spark inside you where the other person sitting there is just like, okay, I'm going to consciously breathe. But they go into the feeling of what it would be like to feel, to breathe the essence of God inside them. And if they can bring that alive with all of their senses, they're having two totally different experiences. One just transcended the wall and found the light. And one is still sitting there and saying, why do I even try this crap? Right. This doesn't right. work. Right. 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 And, and, and as I said, you know, everything that we need is, is within us. It's, it's all there. You know, it's in our, it's in our, it's in, well, you want to say DNA, but like the analogy of the, of a seed, you know, that has everything that that's needed and it has to start to 
grow and it has to start to mature in that sense. And as that a, a, a element of soul starts to, to, to awaken and, and starts to develop, you know, I, I always said that my experience, I didn't do anything in order to become enlightened. I said it was as easy as taking a breath. Mm. Um, and I, and I, and I find that it's still there. So I think that when the shift happens, there's nothing you can do to really prepare for it. I mean, it's just, it's just a question of stepping into it, you know, yes. uh, uh, of, of breathing into it, like you talk about. Um, but you know, I mean, it's not like I do conscious breathing intentionally, but I think I live in a conscious breath. So, you know, and, and, and there are times where I, 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 um, emphasize it, you know, that there's a moment in my life where I want to, um, 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 memorialize it, you know, and, and I want to mark it. And then I will do something along the lines of, 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 mm. of a conscious breathing, but it is, it's a connection that you can make. Mm. Um, it is. And remember that who, is. who we are, you know, we are this, we are, you know, you talk about the breath, um, as God coming into us, you know, and, 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 and that's basically what it is. And, and we're, we're basically this interface between heaven and, and earth. And that's really where it lives. It lives in that interface. And that interface really is heart centered. It's always been heart centered because always. that, that center subtle body, this, this center subtle body that controls the rhythm of our heart and it controls our breathing, you know, the rhythmic functions of our body. That's really where our consciousness should be shifting. And like you said, when you're consciously breathing, you're kind of stepping outside of the linear time continuum in that sense. And then yes. you're living in a, in a, in a more timeless way. So I, I, that's the only thing I can come up with too, is, is that somehow or another it's related to letting go somehow or another it's related to a step outside of the mind and in, in living within the heart. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing else I can, I can say, you know, uh, other than, other than, living within love and, 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 and uh, not allowing fear to take control of you because the fear exists here. It doesn't exist here. Right. Um, and fear is at I, some I, level I, to me, I know fear is a feeling, but it's also a mental construct. Yeah. It's something in your patterning in your mind that, that creates that feeling of fear. That's a match. But for me, playfulness Kind of like the Robin Williams example or the person who can get into like the full on feeling of God breathing them. Sometimes we just we do almost have to become like the child who's whose actual divine development was on course before education and all these other systems got in and disrupted it. It's almost like we have to go back to that child who knows how to breathe. We've probably said this before, but I watch my animals. They naturally belly breathe. But most adults, like they breathe for almost like the chest up. It's not a full breath. And so whether people give this much thought to breathing or not, even if you were just playful and you were willing to give yourself a full belly breath, feel the difference between that and just the shallow breathing that most people do to get by. If you keep breathing that way, you will keep getting by because you're missing the point that God's partnering with you in every single breath together. And it can be this transcendent experience where you might be walking in 3D land, taking a bus, getting in your car, going grocery shopping, but you could be journeying with God the whole time, right? Partnering with God in all these ways, in which case you're then having an other dimensional experience while your feet are still walking to some degree in a 3D planet. And as the more people who, who learn how to do this and really embody it, I do think there are shifts. I do think there's gonna be interventions. I do think there's some gonna be some biblical moments of things that we can't foresee, but we know the power and presence of God. And we know this timing on the planet with all the astrology and all the, the, the shift of the ages and everything else that's going on. There's going to be some kind of divine assistance, like you're saying, that affects a whole group of people that all of a sudden they're activated in a way that they couldn't have foreseen, but it happened, right? So some of us had our own unique cataclysms in our own lives 
that t- brought us to this level of seeking source, of unifying in the breath, of connecting at this deep level and seeing other worlds through that consciousness. But for the masses that still have not awakened or chosen this in their life, I think there's an event that's designed. And some people at some level, if there's this mass consciousness that still has to go through this process, it's almost like at a, as a soul group, they must have known there's going to be this time when this all happens and you'll go through it with everyone. And there probably were points of, of like choice points for our souls. Some of us knew you're going to go through this pretty wicked spell in your life and, and s- something's going to shatter or, or, you know, cause you to question everything that you thought you believed. Some people chose to go through that experience early to maybe be facilitators of a consciousness or whatever, to be a conduit of knowing this at this point. But I truly trust that there's a whole segment of the world's population that is going to turn when some incredibly biblical events take place. I truly believe there's going to be a a coinciding, a convergence of a, a readiness that's being prepared in the masses and an event that helps tip the scales. So all of a sudden they have a birth, like they breathe their first real breath their whole life, even if they're 80, right? They've been saying, I've been breathing my whole life. No, they haven't really breathed until they have a conscious breath, a God breath. I think that's coming. I think there's an event that's going to catalyze that God breath and people will know the difference. And after you consciously breathe a God breath, breathing a regular shallow 3D breath, there's no comparison. And breath corresponds to consciousness. So what I'm saying about the breath also has to do with the consciousness people have inside them. When they start breathing more in this way, they will be accessing another realm and the 3D matrix that previously gripped their attention is going to become irrelevant, but on mass. Do you know what I'm saying? That's a possibility. That's what I sense. I think well, so too. I and I, I think it's related to, again <clears throat> to um, the metaphor of it's like something happens to us through an experience outside of the reality of the the linear time continuum. But whether that's a near death experience or whether that's a dream yes. or whatever yes. that whatever it is. Um, and, and it's, uh, and, and it's like a lightning strike. It's, it's like this amazing amount of awareness. That's just, it's like you're turned on at that yes. point, but in retrospect, yes. when I go back and I say, well, what did I do to, to, what did I do to trigger it? And I said, I did absolutely nothing, but just exist. And, and it was as natural as taking a deep cleansing breath. That's all it was. That right. was it. So I, I, I think that it's not going to be, uh, it, it can't be. It can't be some kind of great external thing. It can't be like a thousand spaceships flying over my house or the Jesus, you know, walking on water, or, you know, across Lake Michigan or something. It can't be outside of us. It has to be an intrinsic experience mm. to convey to us our relationship to the eternal or yes. to a, a higher aspect of ourselves. It has to be some kind of revealing that we have to go through. And, uh, and, it, and it, it would be most effective if it was collective, at least for a large, or at least for a, a, a large group, whether yes. that's the minority of people, whatever it is. And I'd like to think that Everyone deserves to have the experience. The question is, is after the experience, how it's interpreted is totally up to the soul, whether they're prepared to accept it uh, for what it is or what, or, or, or to spin it in a different way that is um, like kind of like enslaved to their awareness, to the awareness that, that they choose to live with it. So, but I, I think that I've been saying this forever, that there has to be something like that in order for us to move forward, in order, otherwise, nothing makes any sense. We just can't have this huge hijack, you know, with, where, where the alter ego of all of these archons and evil people show their true faces and say, 
well, we're just going to take over everything and, and uh, you don't have a chance. That's what they're saying. But I think, I think they're being forced into doing this because I think they realize some awakening is just around the corner. They just want to get as many people on board with their agenda as they can or to impair our, our capacity to experience it, you know, from an individual perspective um, as they can so that there'll still be a remnant of people that will still buy into their, into their whatever the agenda is that they're trying to sell us. But you're right, I completely agree. From my perspective, value is dramatically changing. Money is an, uh, is an abstraction. It makes no sense anymore. Because, you know, I mean, I don't, whatever you're charging, I just look at it and I go, this is, I don't know what this is anymore. You know, whatever. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. And it has no value anymore. That, that, and it's right. almost like I can see money almost like just evolving out of our life or at least going to some kind of a token economy where it's not a major concern anymore as long as you're contributing to the well-being of your not only yourself but everyone else. And you will thrive in whatever society it is that's supposed to show that that we manage to create. But no one, even they, they say, no one even knows what that's gonna be yet. It's never happened before, so. And yet see. I think a higher consciousness is summoning it in and it it is even being built. That frequency is already gaining traction because the people who come, who are connected to the God heart, maybe it's the children of Seth, light coming through some of us, it is manifesting. So. I think what's beautiful in all that we're saying is for me, I'm not expecting some outside source out of side of me either to save me, right? To save the world. But I do think it's going to be in cooperation with source, with the galactics, with higher dimensional beings. However, people view that in their own ways. I think fraud is vitiating itself. It's, it's it's just destroying itself, which is why many of us, I think now we can see with a little bit of hindsight why things didn't happen the way we might have wanted them to. Why did we have to go through the test that we have in the last few years and how how that's been challenging, but also strengthened us in some ways. I think that's the, sort of how the writings of Sun Tzu, right? The art of war is almost like don't interfere with an enemy destroying itself. Don't interfere with fraud vitiating itself. It will erase itself from the planet if you have the faith and fortitude to endure as it does that thing. And then what I, I also sense, though, is, is simultaneous to that, is that the light is infusing this planet. As the fraud vitiates itself, it just dematerializes itself. It sort of self-destructs. Uh, I think the light is also coming in and cleaning up any lingering debris that doesn't belong in a higher frequency consciousness. And we're here, we're gonna be going through as that all alchemizes on the planet. We are living through that. I don't think it's gonna be a lot of people just disappearing from the planet like when Lemuria sank and Atlantis sank and we had to come back and live other lifetimes and do it again. I think there's so many things we're pulling in today, but uh, Wayne Dyer, talks about this experience of dying while you're alive. We're dying to the old allegiance to a system and a world that was an illusion in the first place based largely in serpentine foundations and principles. And if we all colluded with the illusion for long enough to get to this point, when enough people, it's just the same thing with the currency, if it's backed by nothing, and essentially the dollar kind of is, and there are other currencies around the world that have faced this, it's only the belief of the people that keep it circulating at all. So when the people no longer believe in the dollar, it will die while we're still alive, right? It will just vitiate itself. And then in this new higher consciousness, when people wake up and say, why would we ever have allowed a currency to never be backed by anything that's real? We will summon in that experience, which is, I think is already happening to some degree whether it's precious metals coming in, commodities, tokens that are backed by commodities and other real assets. But I think it's truly happening. And I think what's so good for people to know is anybody that's listening to a podcast and still to the end with us now, 
is to know that we're not alone, that there are other people who are seeing this new reality, this new realm, this new consciousness having its birth. And we are breathing some new prana in it. And the more people can value breathing the new prana and making like, like that, like that fully coming alive in their sentient system, it, we are making the old system worthless and irrelevant. And I think that's a big part of what's going to transcend this, but there's probably some kind of real-time catalysmic type event that gets the attention of people and on mass everybody experiences something and we'll have to see because that part's the mystery just like the red sea parting they didn't know that piece but they were trusting moses and his connection and guidance or whatever and their inner guidance to follow him and go on that journey i think some people are already knowing that god and the benevolent beings of creation are are probably prepared to orchestrate some pretty significant events and then the world will breathe together in in a majority in in co cooperation all knowing the value of that somehow downloading into them around the same time and there may still be some beings on the planet that for whatever reason their soul is just not going to turn to that right and that they go through another cycle in some other way somehow and a lot more has to get revealed obviously we both know that but the people willing to breathe where god is and feel that in your life as an activated consciousness then we are contributing to the 3d matrix's irrelevance which means god's creation is what's relevant it is what has value it's what always has been like the blueprint in the seed that becomes the oak tree we are we are aligning back with that truth and we're just we give zero life force to the matrix as it is even if we hear terrible revelations coming out because i think that will still be the case i can go on and on about this and i just was leaving this message for the marinades um message that will post at least this saturday we can be sieves it's like being a vibrational sieve of the darkness that we see it we we witness it but we don't give any attention because when we give our energy to it, we give it form. And the best thing we can do is just let it vitiate itself. Just let it vitiate itself, get exposed and vitiated, exposed and vitiated, right? Disappearing from our reality. Because I think God's creation has been here the whole time. It's been this like strange holographic or whatever it is, this like false complete theater and when the theater of God's creation falls away, what's left is God's creation. So it's a powerful time. And it requires us engaging with our consciousness because our linear mind is going to say, how's that going to work? Your mind, your ego is never going to solve this. It's way bigger. But at a feeling sense, a felt sense, we can, we can have a consciousness sense of how this is actually going to be true and it's actually going to happen. Those are my two cents there, Paul. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> well, I, I, I would say that it's extremely difficult even now yeah. to just get people to turn away from the shadows and face the light. It's ex Why is it so difficult? But it still is. It's still extremely difficult. And that's all it takes. It's all it takes. That's what, that's what it took for me. Is is just is 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 turning towards the light, honestly and sincerely. Embrace it and say, okay, this looking at the shadow stuff doesn't work for me anymore. What about turning towards the light? There was a a book that was written. It was called The Bridge Over the River, and it was it was a, a book about a, a German no, it was an Austrian soldier who was killed in the First World War, and he and he, and he and he continued a communication with his sister for about a year and and he gives his um experience in that in that zone between the physical life and and in the shadow realm and then the spiritual realm wow um and, yeah and and and, it, and when you're killed as a young person it's pretty traumatic and so you're still kind of connected more to the physical realm and and so his experience for a while was trying to get other soldiers who had died in conflict to turn their attentions towards the light 
and almost no one would listen to it. Even then, they were so they captivated, out, even in the they were astral so space, captivated by what was going on. Right. So, I mean, in, in, in that sense, you know, I, 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 and I know this, that when it happens, it happens in the physical realm, right? You, you, you make that decision. Virtually every single person that I have ever met who's made that decision, who's done it, has a great awakening. It's, it's, it, there, it's, it, it's, there's some kind of vision or some experience that heralds the event. It's like coming back and, 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 and most of my people that I know who, who've done this is an awakening dream of some sort or an event. Once they've made it, just, it won't happen until you turn around and it's face a decision. The it's a choice. You have to, it's a conviction. You have to, you have to do it. Yes. But in doing so, you will have the experience. And yes. So if enough people start turning towards the light, it's possible that maybe that might trigger a larger collective experience yes. again, outside of time. It has to be outside of linear time in order for it to have any value. Yes, I agree with you, Paul. I agree. And I love our conversations. And I hope everybody who's listening to us today, this is what we do. I think it's what we do very well. We go into these deep places and we share what we see, what we feel, what we're dreaming, what what all of that is. And we invite people because that's how you transcend the matrix, right? We have to enter that space. So when you hang out with me and Paul, you're hanging out with us outside of time, which means we can go anywhere and we do. And so I always appreciate that about you, Paul. And people can find you and your work and your writings and some of our videos, of course, at beyondthesoulsmeridian.com. Org. I hope people tune in. I hope Paul and I, we can come back. We were here, I think this was about two months ago, maybe. We like to, I would like to do this regularly. 2024 is a big year, as we all know, everything that we talked about today. So to have our lenses of perception and our consciousness entering in the mass social media space, we invite people to step outside of time with us on a more regular basis this year. So thank you. Thank you, Paul, for being here. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Marie. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And we'll have more podcasts and more insights coming up for you in the coming months as more astrological events take place and as more real-time events take place. So blessings, everyone. We'll see you soon.